today I get the super cool job of servicing this very cool pond. So we'll check the water, we'll clean the filter, and it's fish are all looking very nice and healthy. This could do with a bit of a clean. What a beautiful day for it. Let's get started. So this pond hasn't had any love for a little while apparently. The fish look great, a beautiful big butterfly koi. Another one, some lovely kohakus and sankies and showers. These fish are looking beautiful. Apparently they haven't had any maintenance for quite a while, but in saying that, they're looking pretty good. So we've got the filter here. It's got an Awasa filter. Um, it's got a UV steriliser in it that should be replaced yearly, so maybe we're about due. Water looks pretty clear all considering. It's got a little bit of plant growing there. It's got a little bit of algae and stuff, which isn't really a bad thing. Um, the algae is just going to be sucking a bit of nutrients out of the water. We've got a fountain here that needs a clean. We've got a filter over there that needs a clean. But other than that, we've got some really ha healthy, happy looking fish. Just go to show that even though these guys supposedly haven't had any maintenance for a while, really looking nice. Just go to show you how basic it is to have a beautiful feature like this. Now I've just tested the water in here and the fish look beautiful but the water quality is surprisingly bad considering how beautiful the fish are looking. So basically at the moment the pH is a little bit on the acid side. Um, there's no ammonia. There's a tiny little bit of nitrite. There's a little bit of nitrate. Your KH is 1 and GH is 1 and that's what I've tested. So basically to raise the pH we're going to add a bit of this. That's going to raise the pH and KH. We're going to add this to raise the GH because one is not a good level. If it's zero, we're in all sorts of trouble. One's not ideal. GH of one is not ideal either. The immune system of the fish is going to be challenged. I'm going to do a decent water change. So I'm going to add plenty of prime to detoxify the bit of nitrite that's in there. And the nitrite will also signify that the um, filter would definitely be due for a change. And then I'll add a bit of extra good bacteria for no other reason than the fact that he's got it. So very disappointed with the water test results, but not the end of the world because he's been using decent quality food. He's not been overfeeding the fish. They do not look fat and they do not look thin. And really, the fish look quite good, but the pond is well due for some maintenance, which I'm going to get onto right now. And maintenance isn't something you just do once and we're all good. Maintenance is something that we want to follow up. And even if you haven't done maintenance for a while, even if the fish are good, it's really a matter of um, doing a few follow-up services to get us back on track because it's not like we're just going to clean it once and then everything's great. We're going to have to just keep an eye on these water test results and the fact that the fish are healthy and good is a wonderful, wonderful sign but it's definitely not something that we want to rest our laurels on. So I'm going to do a nice big water change, a nice big filter clean. I've tested the water. I can supplement the water and then we'll get back on track with this pond because it really is a beautiful feature of a really beautiful position in a beautiful house. Now in reference to um, pretending you're on holidays, how good is this? You got this little place here, perfect place to have a bit of a read or a bit of a relax. Sit down and enjoy your fish. 
Does life get any better than this? I don't know. Pretty cool. This is even fun to service. A little lot imagine owning this. I reckon that guy's got the idea. That'd be me if I was a statue, sit around looking relaxed, watching the fish. So what I'm going to do now is give this filter a clean. So this is a all-in-one UV sterilizer biological pump. So first thing we need to do is take off this water fountain. That just screws off. Uh, it's covered in algae at the moment, so I'll give that a clean. And it's got this cool little feature here, which one directs how much water goes to the fountain and how much shoots out here, and the other one governs how powerful it is. It's a pretty cool little device. Then the next thing we're going to do is open these clips up, take this off. Obviously, this is a nice slimy green, so we've got to give that a clean. And now check this out. Woo! Look at that for dirty. So I'm gonna fit my bucket. And this smells as good as it looks. Now the way I'm gonna clean this this is so dirty that I'm just going to hose it out. Normally I don't want to hose it out because I want to keep all the good bacteria. But this is way past that. There will be enough good bacteria in the filter, to, the other filter, to keep these fish alive. But this is just too dirty to go thinking about cleaning it in tank water. This is just going to get hosed out. These little media boxes, I will clean these in tank water. Because tap water is your enemy. Unless it's this bad, tap water is the only option. But, um, wow. You really want to clean this at least once a month. Not once a year. Now, normally I'd never want to clean a filter with tap water. I normally only want to clean in water from the fish tank, not water from the tap. But when it's this bad, Sometimes you've just got to clean it in tap water. It's like a reboot when it's this bad. So I try to avoid doing this, but because this pond has also got a large filter in it, I'm assuming there'll be enough good bacteria in the main filter because trying to clean this in tank water is just not going to happen because this is too far gone. Now, when designing a filter, the very most important thing to consider is how easy it is to clean. Now, we've had a bit of a disaster here because this filter is in a very hard place to access. And so as soon as I've touched it, these outlets have snapped. Now, they can easily and cheaply be replaced, but preferably, I'd like to see this filter changed for an Awasa. Now, an Awasa has a very effective backwash. Now to backwash an Awasa, all we do is switch it to backwash and we can pump on a handle and it's a very efficient way of cleaning the filter. Now these Pond 1 filters, as good value as they are to buy, they're a complete pain in the ass to clean and the backwash feature is useless. So you've literally got to pull this apart to clean it and you can see that that hasn't been done because the filter's putrid. So I'd really recommend replacing this for a filter that is easier to service. Even if you've got to pay a bit more for the filter, it's really worth it because you're gonna end up with better results if you do it more often because it's easier. Now, if you've got ponds, having a real big thick hose is definitely your friend. Now, this is a really fortunate situation because I can easily gravity feed water from the pond down out to the river. So normally when I'm doing a siphon of a pond, I need to use something like a vacuum to suck the water out because very regularly the pond is the lowest point. 
so therefore you need to pump the water out whereas in this situation i can run this over the bottom of the pond i can suck the crap out of the bottom of the pond and i can use gravity to do it so i'm gonna go ahead and um run this through the bottom of the pond and i'm going to suck all the crap out of the bottom of the pond and um remove some water doing a bit of a water change and um a little bit of a bottom siphon which will um be step one on cleaning this pond up but you don't want to change more than about a third at a time when you do something like this because you don't want to shock the fish when you refill it now with a pond like this getting algae and that in the bottom of the pond is very normal now i could go and clean all this algae off and visually might make the pond look a little bit cleaner but it's sort of not really in my best interest right now because the pond's been overdue for some servicing what i'm going to opt to do is um use my siphon siphon a lot of the crap out of the water i'm going to start improving the water quality as the water quality improves then i will start doing a little bit more cleaning but as i'm going to have to do some work on the filter what i don't want to do is try and do too many things all at once because all your good bacteria amongst the um, bio cover may be quite valuable at this stage particularly due to how dirty the filters were and so forth so i'd rather clean the pond up in stages instead of trying to clean it all up nice and clean in one go that aesthetically might look great but biologically that can be a disaster because we need an amount of stability with our good bacteria in order to make sure the fish are okay otherwise we clean it all up it looks nice and hospital clean then we end up with high ammonia and nitrite and we end up losing our fish we've already got a little bit of nitrite in the water so i'm going to be a little bit delicate as it is and i'm going to make sure that i'm treating the water daily with a little bit of safe particularly after this little adventure because there is a little bit of nitrite now because the filters were so dirty and particularly after i've cleaned up the filters i've done that one with tap water so i'm going to be very worried about my bacteria for the next month so regular water tests are going to be quite important regular water changes are going to be quite important and these are very healthy happy strong fish so they really should pull through quite well but monitoring the water quality doing some regular water changes and systematically cleaning the pond up is going to be the order of the day definitely not trying to do everything at once because we do have a ecosystem here that we are trying to nurture to make sure we keep these fish nice and healthy and happy now, you've got a pond that hasn't been serviced for a while you've got to be careful not doing too much at once like there's a big pile of rocks here so there'd be a lot of sediment underneath these rocks there's a whole bunch of rocks over here so what i don't want to do is go and just disturb all these rocks at once because what can happen is in the sediment under the rocks we can form what's called hydrogen sulfide and hydrogen sulfide is actually poisonous to fish and to me so what you want to do is instead of trying to do one big massive clean and clean it all up and potentially release that hydrogen sulfide potentially making the fish sick and sometimes even me sick what you want to do is just do one small section at a time that way you're limiting your exposure to um, too much biological change so i'm just going to sort of ruffle over the surface this time i'm not going to try and get down under those rocks too much and then hopefully after a series of services i'll start to probe in it a bit more and a bit more now, if I have actually released hydrogen sulfide, I'll find the fish start gasping. I'll find sometimes it'll smell, sometimes it won't. But there is a product called Polyfilter that I have found very successful for removing hydrogen sulfide. But the key is not to try and release it all at once. If I release a little bit of it, it's probably not the end of the world. If I go releasing too much at once, it can be a major problem. Little and often is the key to resurrecting an aquarium or a pond 
massive overhauls are often a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I'm going to have to give this filter a clean. As you can see, it's pretty putrid. But the key is really to clean it in tank water, not tap water. Or pond water, not tap water. Which obviously is a concern to me, considering how dirty that is. So I'm just going to have to really keep an eye on these levels. Because, um... That's a really dirty filter. The key is clean them more often. That filter really needs to be cleaned monthly. So what I'm doing now is cleaning the filters. Now this is water that's siphoning out of the pond. Because this is such an ideal situation, because the pond's up there, I'm able to siphon the water down here, clean the filters out in water from the pond, so I'm keeping all the good bacteria Whereas normally, this would not be so easy because getting water out of the pond wouldn't be as easy as this. This is how we clean the biomedia. Now, if you are going to put tap water into your pond, what you want to do is every few centimetres as the water fills up, you want to add some water ager and just sprinkle it around. <laughs> and then what the water ager will do is just take the chlorine and stuff out of the water because you don't want to put too much chlorine in it at a time, otherwise you can sterilize your tank and jeopardize your fish. And because I'm worried about a nitrite in this pond, um, this will detoxify the nitrite. So adding a five times dose of this daily is gonna be crucial to helping these fish after this major service. Now a device like this is very handy for cleaning your pond. Um, in this case, because there's a fair bit going on with this pond, I'm not actually going to focus on, on giving it much of a clean right now. But for future reference, having a tool like this is a very good way of um, cleaning the side of your pond. And the other thing that's your friend is a good old fishnet. Because what you want to do on a semi-regular basis is you want to just go around and simply scoop all the crap out of the pond and that will reduce decomposition within the pond. Once again, little and often is the key to a good healthy pond. Now when working in and around your pond, really be careful about situations like this because it is amazing how slippery it is around a pond. I've actually fell into several ponds. Not that I'm the most careful person in the world, but it can be embarrassing and it's not as fun as you think falling into a pond it's usually winter too so falling into a pond when you're freezing cold in winter isn't advisable so trying to keep three points of contact where possible is a very good idea like hanging on to the pole idiots fall in ponds i've fell in plenty of ponds just got to be careful around ponds they're very slippery now the gh of this pond is currently one and i really want it to be between eight and twelve so adding GH and testing it regularly until you get the level up is highly advisable because it will greatly improve the immune system of the fish, help their body slime and so forth. So regular additions of GH to raise it because this pond has obviously been flushed out with rainwater, which has caused the GH to fall. Um, we've also got a bit of good bacteria here which is going to help right now considering we've got some nitrite in the water so a bit of that goes in there um, and then our KH is quite low so I'm gonna chuck some of these in and then that will help to raise our KH so I'll chuck some in then I'll give it a test before I leave because you don't want to raise it too much. There's no ammonia in here right now, so you never want to add this when there's ammonia in the water or you'll make the ammonia more toxic. So we currently don't have ammonia. We do have nitrite. So I'm going to add a bit of this, not too much. And then I'll test it before I leave. We want to raise it a couple of points. Then we want to come back and check it, then raise it a bit more until we get the KH about six and then I'm happy. It's currently one. 
If it gets down to zero, that can be a major problem. Now, the other thing that would help a pond like this that hasn't had as much maintenance as we wish, which has got a KH level of one, which is a worry to me, is to add a bag of coral rubble. That will help lighten up the bottom. You could even put it over there if you don't want to see it. But the coral rubble, in the presence of the more acidic lower KH water, the coral rubble will break down and the calcium carbonate will release calcium and carbonate into the water, which will help the fish. So the coral rubble does not help a good situation, but does help a bad situation from being worse. So a bag of coral rubble would be a good little investment for this pond at this time. Now this filter here has got a UV steriliser in it. And so does that filter there. And it's very important you replace the UV steriliser tubes yearly if you want them to maintain effective. So it's good just to jot down when they need replacing so you know when to replace them so they can do the job they need to because the year goes real fast so if you don't write down when you've got to replace them you often forget so the sun is going down and this pond is all cleaned up so i have cleaned the filter i have cleaned the fountain somewhere there i have done a water change i've siphoned all the crap out of the bottom and I've tested the water. So, all done. And a follow-up service sooner than later is gonna be better because the water quality wasn't ideal. So I just need a bit of follow-up and make sure these healthy fish stay nice and healthy. Now working outside with fish ponds is amazing when the weather's good, but it sucks when the weather's bad. Raining sucks. Boiling hot days suck, but beautiful days being outside, working on a nice fish pond, have a good life.